here we are with the big bad number eight, which is the last one you have to do, right? Number nine, you don't have to do. So let me, I'll write it on the thing here. 7.3, number nine, skip. So this is number eight. Number eight, last one, do. All right. All right, so Jamal is planning to invest. Did we do this one? All of a sudden I remember that. No? We didn't do this one? Okay, I remember reading it. Jamal is planning, I just remember that name, Jamal, uh, is planning to invest up to 25,000 Citibank or State, 25,000, is it 1,000? Yeah, 20,000. He wants to invest at least 1,000 in Citibank, no more than, uh, but no more than 12,000 since, um, but not more than 12,000. Since State Bank does not insure more than 16,000, he wants to invest no more than that amount in State Bank. Interested Citibank is 9%, State Bank is 11. How much should he invest in each bank to earn the most interest? What is the maximum amount of interest that Jamal can earn? So is this the hardest one then, other than number nine? Yes. So I really only have time for one. So I want to do the worst one. I don't remember which is the worst. Is this it? Yeah, this, this, one, this one was the hardest one. That one was the hardest. Okay. Yeah, All right. So Jamal's going to invest twenty five thousand. So Citibank plus State Bank, twenty five thousand. Right. right? Than equal to. Less than or equal to technically. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because that's the maximum he's going to do. Those are going to add up to be less than or equal to twenty five thousand. I'm going to put in Citibank plus State Bank. Is less than or equal to twenty five thousand at most twenty five. All right. He wants to invest at least one thousand in Citibank, but not more than twelve thousand. So Citibank is between one thousand and twelve thousand, right? At least one, not more than, not more than twelve. State Bank, blah blah blah, no more than sixteen thousand. So State Bank at most. 16,000. We good? With all those, and of course we're trying to maximize. There's always something you're trying to maximize or minimize called the objective function. The objective function that we're trying to maximize or minimize is the interest, which is Citibank is 9%, so 0 0.09 Citibank plus 0 0.11 State Bank. That's the objective function. Okay, so you good so far with changing the, the words to <coughs> equations and stuff? So on these, in this 7.3, so again, I put off 7.3. It's due, on, I just put it off about 15 minutes ago, and it's going to be due on Thursday. just want to give you a little more time on it in case you had trouble. And uh, number nine, we don't do. I, I just I can't remove it from the homework because it won't let me after people started it. Won't let me alter the assignment. But I realized number nine is a stinker, and it's not that it's not worth our time. Forget about number nine. So don't worry about number nine. If you, if you have any trouble with it, Monique will help you. She's worked it out for 17 hours, and she's be glad to go. There'll be a lecture right after this on number nine. Uh, anyway, so um, so these are, so this will be the last one that we have to actually do in 7.3, number eight. So there's our equation. Everybody okay with those? There's always a bunch of inequalities and then one thing you're trying to maximize or minimize. Getting the hang of that? It's going to be the same thing today in the new stuff with the simplex. It's going to be, you'll like it better. It's going to be easier. But it's the basic start, the same. Uh, this whole chapter, chapter 7, they all start a bunch of inequalities and one thing to <coughs> maximize or minimize. Usually it's maximizing profit or minimizing cost if you're a business. Right? All right. So now we basically have to graph all the inequalities graph them, and then find the shaded feasible set, and then check all the corners in the maximizing thing. Find the one that's best, based, right? So that's what we're going to do. So that's always the game plan, right? I'm going to do some big graph, line, 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 or whatever. I don't know what they look like. And then I'm going to take some shading section. Then I'll take the corners of that shaded section, and I'll plug them all into their X and Y coordinates, or their C and S coordinates, into the objective function and just take the highest one because it says maximize. That's the game plan, right? All right, so how do we get that? Well, I suggested that you use your graphing calculator, but that doesn't make it totally simple. Let's, let's do that. Okay, so first off, to use our graphing calculator, 
we have to get the y alone. Because what your graphing calculator has is y1 equals, y2 equals, y3 equals. It has y alone entry points, doesn't it? So you have to get y alone to use your graphing calculator. So which one is y, c or s? s. You could do either one, but yeah, I happen to do c first and then s. You could totally reverse it. There's no magic formula. There's no magic reason. You could do either one. But yeah, I'll just say, look, I did C first. I'll call that X, and I'll call the S Y. <coughs> you could do it the other way. It would work fine. But just know whatever you're doing and stay consistent with your own plan. So I'm just going to make C my X and S my Y. All right. So if I've got to get Y alone, that means I've got to get S alone in each of those equations because S is playing the role of Y. So take that first one, get S alone, which means, no, don't do that. Um, grab the C and jump it over. So that means C is less than or equal to, I mean, I mean S is less than or equal to negative C plus 25,000. Good so far. You can put that minus C in the back or the front. It doesn't really matter. I, I dropped all the zeros off when I did it just to make it a easier. Well, I did that on that one because we had them on both sides. Okay. You can't do it when it's only on one side. I'm glad you brought that question up. Does everybody see that? There was a problem I did last week. Today's Monday, right? Last week that uh, we're, we had zeros on both sides. So yeah, then I'm just dividing by 1,000 on both sides. But I can't do that here, right? Because if I divided by 1,000, you know, there's no zeros on these guys, right? Whatever you've got to do to one, you do to, this, to all of them. And, and I can't do that because there's not zeros on both sides. So they have to stay here. Everybody see that? I'm glad you brought that up. Um, okay, now this one, this one's actually two inequalities. Well, let me save him. Let me save him. This one is S. It, nothing to do there. Y is already alone on him, huh? Y is already alone. Good to there. So I'm going to go to a fresh screen and graph that. Yeah, you got that down? Okay. I'll, I'll flash back in a minute if you didn't quite get it all down. All right, so I got to write them. So I got this one s less than or equal to negative c plus twenty five thousand, like that. And then what? Oh, c is between a thousand and twelve thousand. I'll talk about that one in a minute. And the other one s less than or equal to sixteen thousand, like that. And I'm trying to maximize point oh nine plus point eleven. C plus point eleven S. Okay, everybody got that down? We all good there? So get S alone. Now, the, the middle one, uh, this one, only has C. So I can't get S alone. There's not even an S, right? So let's, we'll see what happens with that. All right, so what we can do now, I'm going to type into my graphing calculator, Y1 equals negative X plus 25,000, and Y2 equals 16,000. Everybody good with that? I cannot put the middle one into my calculator because there's no y value. There's no y at all. There's only an x. So I'm just going to put the first and the third into my calculator, just the top one and the bottom one, the ones that have s's, the ones that have y values, so to speak. Put those into your calculator and graph them. All right, so go ahead and do that. Now, you're going to have to make your window big. You might not realize it at first. That's fine. Just um, put them into your graphing calculator. Go to y1, go to y2, so y1 equals negative x. Make, make sure you use the right negative, right? It gets really upset if you put a subtraction instead of a negative. Got to put a negative, and, uh, which, is the, which has parentheses around it, right? On that. So, so we good. Does that light actually make it worse? Maybe. Okay, so put in y1 and y2, like that. Now, if I just go graph, I'm probably going to see nothing. Yeah. yeah, because, now, remember what you do. This is a really important lesson. What do you do when you hit graph and you see nothing? And how do you know how to change your window, though? We know we need to change our window, but how in the world? Table. 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 Good. Is everybody aware of that? Everybody aware? You've got to come up here at second table. And look at those Y values. You go, oh, they're like up in the 24,000. My window's just going like 0 to 10. 
You know, and it's way up here at 24,000. It's like I'm looking for the airplane at 10 feet up, and it's flying at 24,000 feet. Not going to see it, right? So then you go back to, oh, i got to make sure my window goes up to pass the highest Y values I'm seeing. So 25,000, or maybe go to 26,000, I don't know, whatever. So go back to window, hit second window. Whoops, that was the wrong thing. I don't know why I hit there. Just hit window. Yeah, not second window, just regular window. I don't know what that shade thing is. But um, I'm going to go 0 to 100. I'm not, I'm not messing with X. But Y, I'm going to go up to like 25,000, I guess. Let me hit graph and see if that helps. Oh, it's too high up still. That's kind of weird. All right, let me go higher. Let me go back to window and go to like 26,000 and hit graph. So 26,000. Oh, there that line went down a little bit. See how this one started to go down a little bit? Basically, I need to make X go further as well. Right, because you see that top line is starting to bend down, but it's not going to hit the other one until you go way further on the right. So go back to my window again and make the X like a lot bigger now. Make the X like, I don't know what, make, make, make him 10,000? Let me just try that. Oh yeah, that worked pretty well. So there we go. In fact, actually a little bit further because i got to get past that intersection a little bit. So I'm going to make X like, I don't know, 15,000. One, two, three, yeah. So I made X 0 to 15,000. There, that's a nice window. All right. So do you all see how I found that? By, I hit the graph, and I had nothing. So I hit second table. And I saw the Y1, the Y2 values were up around 24,000 or something. And so I changed my window when I saw that. So window, I ended up making the window go X min 0, X max. And the max for the X, I ended up having to go out to uh, like 15,000. And the Y, Y min 0. Y max. What am I at? 26,000? I think I'm at 26,000 for my Y max. So I have to do something to get a good view. Is that right? Yeah, I'm at 26,000. Yeah. All right. So that's, again, that's by hitting Y. I'm sorry, hitting table and looking at the Y values. I know how big to make Y. And how did I figure out the X? Well, I saw the line just barely started to come down. So I need to go further to the right. Ended up going to 15,000. I found a nice intersection between the two. Not only that, you know where else I should have seen my X? Look at this right here. What is This is telling me about X, isn't it? It's saying X can only go from 1,000 to 12,000. So let's, yeah, in fact, let's just make that our window. Yeah, what am I doing? I should have just made that our window. So the X, yeah, that would be the easiest way to handle that. This is X. Remember, C is X? So that's basically saying, look, X starts at 1,000 and goes to 12,000. That's all the X values you're allowed to work with. Just make your X min 1,000, your X max 12,000, and that'll be the boundaries of the window, which are the boundaries for X. So do that for your window. X is 1,000 to 12,000. And graph. 1,000 to 12,000. We're looking at the graph. There it is. Is that good? Y'all getting that okay? See how I figured all that out? So... So we got a nice little picture now. I'm going to draw it on our, generally put it here on our screen. Okay, so what am I looking at? I'm looking at one line's kind of coming down, and the other line's going straight, like that. And my window is from 1,000 to 12,000. Oh, I'm not showing you anything, am I? And, and my Y goes 0 to 26,000. All right, so there's what we're looking at. You getting that on your screen? Okay, so now, and the inequalities, what were they? Um, they were all less, look back at the inequalities, they're all less than, less than, right? I mean the Y ones. It's Y <coughs> less than, Y less than. 
right? Right, it was less than, less than. So what does that mean? Where's the shading going to be? Down here, right? If it's less, and this, this is the, the wall is, is the right memory because you got to, it stops there. So this is the shading. That's less. That's less than all the lines, right? Now, if for the ones where the Ys are greater, then you shade above all lines. That would be up here if it was greater. That would be above all the lines, but it's not greater. You with me, guys? You see how that works? So the shading for both cases is less than, so I'm shading what's less than below both lines. Okay, so what are the corners of that shaded region? Here, here, and here. Those are the three corners. Because this is a wall. This is one of the walls at X12,000, and this is a wall at X1,000. Everybody see why that is? Because of this requirement right here about X. It's between 1,000 and 12,000. Right? This is C down here, and this is S up here. Yeah, it's because right here, see what they're saying? The X has to be between 1,000 and 12,000. That's what they told me right here in, this, in the words. They said 1,000, Citibank is between 1,000 and 12,000. How would you put on, on the calculator? I just made the window do that right here. It doesn't actually show me a line. It won't show me a line. I just made that what I'm looking at. I just made my window simply that, X going from 1,000 to 12,000. All right, so we're looking, but those are the corners, the jagged corners of the shaded, what's called feasible set. It's feasible, meaning it's allowable, it's doable. He can invest anywhere in this shaded region. It'll fit his criterion for what he wants to do with State Bank and City Bank and the maximum he has and all that. So we want to find, for this shaded feasible set, what's feasible, what's allowable, what's doable, what's the best? Well, it's always one of the outposts, one of the jagged corners. Well, it could be, it could be this one, I guess. It's not going to be. Well, maybe it could be. Yeah, so those, those technically, there we go. Technically, there's five corners. It's almost never... Well, it's not going to be the zero, zero one for sure. But it, it might be one of these four. So I should have included that. Yeah, so those are the four jagged corners, the four corners of the feasible set, right? So I've got to test all those. I've got to first find them and then plug them into the objective function, what we're trying to maximize. So what are they? What are they? Well, this one's easy enough. This one's over 12,000 up zero, right? We're just looking at over 12,000 comma zero. Is that on the screen? Yeah. Over 12,000 comma zero. Okay. So um, how do we find the other ones? Yeah, that's a little tricky. Yeah, this one's harder because of that weird X requirement. Okay, let's, let's find this one. This one you do by intersect, right? You just do the intersect routine on your graphing calculator. Everybody knows how to do that. If you have trouble with that, come see me. I, I sent out a YouTube just you know, right before class today to all your emails, again, that whatever email you put into Math Excel, I sent a YouTube with uh, help on finding these. So what's, what's the intersect say there? Somebody got that one? 9,000, nine, 9 and then 6? 9,000 comma 16,000? Good, good. Sounds like that's it. 9,000, 16,000 by doing the intersect on the graphing calculator. So we got two of them. Now, how do we find the other corners? Well, it's normally zero. 1,000, But I put in 1,000. That's the trick. Normally, the left edge is zero. That's why this is a special one. The left edge is actually 1,000. So you just need to go to the table and find where x is 1,000. Right? You with me? Because this is actually, it's 1,000 up something. So go hit, remember, hit second table and just go to the table and find where the x is 1,000 and find what the y value is going with that. Is that working? You guys getting that? So go to thing on in the graph. You go to second table, which is above graph. Table. See the values then? I want to go to an x value of a thousand. Where is oh I gotta go way. I don't know. That could that's gonna be way too long, huh? Yeah, there's another. Oh, it's gonna take too long. Alright, we gotta do something else. Uh, value. Oh yeah. Value will do it. Or you can just plug it in by hand. Value, that means plug in an X value. Let's just do that. Value is saying X equals, oh yeah, this is nice. Yeah. Just type in X 1,000. 
It'll tell you. Boom. There it is. And it even shows the dot. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? There it is. Yeah, you just type in value 1,000, and it tells you the y value for that equation. It even tells you what the equation is. Isn't that nice? Is 24,000. Everybody see that? So let me write out what I just did. So, it's, yeah, I didn't know about that. Let's, let's do that instead of table. I think that's nicer than table. On uh, table as well, um, uh -huh. F2 <coughs> is the top button. You can select table start and put in an X value, and it'll drop you right to the Y value. Oh, nice. Okay. So I did second calc and value, and I let X be 1,000, and it told me Y was, what, 24,000? 24,000. So that's that point, 1,000 comma 24,000. That's the wrong um, y-axis. It should be y2. That's for y1. Yeah, it's 16,000. Oh, thank you. It, oh, it did the other one. Now, why did it do the other one? It did this one. What you guys are saying is it did that one, huh? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Well, now, how do you make it do the other one? Why does it do... Scroll down, like when you do the value, just scroll down, move your point down to the next line. So when you do second calc and then value... The second calc and then value... value. And then it, it went on Y1, but you can pull the down button, the arrow down button, and it'll go down to... Oh, you're right! Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, let me see what uh, Monique is saying. Let me show you. So I did, I did the second calc value, 1,000, and, and, and see it's showing me up there? Yeah, if you just push the down, see the up-down arrow? That's how you always jump from line to line. When you have like two or three lines on your graph, just push the down arrow, boom, it jumps down there. See, see where the cursor is now? That's the one I want. Thanks. I didn't even notice I had the total wrong value. That's at 16,000. Yeah, so just do the up-down arrow. That's how you always jump from line to line when you have more than one line on a graph. Excellent. Okay. I'm learning with you here. So not 24,000. That one's 16. The other one was over 1,000, up 24,000. But we don't care about that one, so I don't even care. Because that's not a, that's, the other one is not a corner of the shaded chunk, is it? Yeah, so second value, 1,000, and then hit the uh, down arrow or the up arrow, either one, and you'll jump to the other line. So we got that one. We got, we got this one, this one. We don't care about zero, zero. We got this one. How about that one? So that last one, hit, hit table, and then hit on mine, it's F2 setup. And then once you're in setup, it says table start. I put in the X value of 12,000. Yeah, you could do it that way. We could just do the same thing we, we did before with value. Right, we could just do second calc. But yeah, your table way will work too. Second calc value and just let X be, what is it, 12,000, right? Because that's what was on the screen there. Yeah, let X be 12,000. I'm kind of scribbling. Right? <laughs> All right, so second, let's go back to it. Make sure that works. It's not just in my imagination. Second calc value, enter. X is 12,000? Yeah, 12,000. Boom. There, see where it is? It's right over here. That's the one I want. Y must be 13,000. It's saying you could jump up and down if you wanted the other one. I don't want the other one. I want that one. So there it is. So that's right. So this is 12,000 comma, what was it? 13,000. 12, 13? All right, we found all the corners of the shaded chunk. We found them. So now you just have to enter those one at a time. Let me come over here. And we have to put those into the objective function. So what was the objective function? function. It was, we're trying to maximize 0.09x plus 0.11y or c and s, whatever. Okay, so that means do the first one. The, I'll start with like this one maybe. So the 1,000, 16,000. So it's 0.09 times 1,000 plus 0.11 times 16,000, and then just work that out. Somebody got a number on that one? 90 and 
and 176. 266 or 2660. I might be off by a factor of 10. I can't. So 266? Uh, okay, so much for my ability to do it. 1850, must be it. Thank you. 1850, that's the first one. So this one's 1850. That's the, that's the amount of interest he would make if he invested 1000 in Citibank and 16000 in State Bank. Does that make sense what that dot means about the real world? If he did Citibank 1000 State Bank 16000 into the year his interest would be 1850 We want the maximum, so let's go to this one now. How about this one? Now we'll plug in um, 9,000 comma 16,000 to get 0 0.09 times 9 plus 0 0.11 times 16. So we got an answer there? 25.70. 20, a little bit more. That's probably the better answer. Well, it's better. It might, I'm not sure it's the best. Let's try this one over here now. So now I'm kind of running out of room again. So the third one. 12,000 comma 13,000, plug that in, 0 0.09 times 12,000 plus 0.11 times 13,000, 251, 2510, ooh, I got one, all right, 2510, so this one is 2510, which is not quite as good as 2570, it's close, huh, and last, Last would be this one here. Plug in 12,000 comma zero. So I'm really out of room here. 12,000 comma zero. Point oh nine times 12,000 plus point eleven times zero is 1080, huh? 1080. So who's the winner? Right there. 2570. He, he makes the most interest by putting 9000 in Citibank, 16000 in State Bank. That's his maximum profit point, given his constraints, given the requirements. Just as easy as that. There we go. A lot of steps. Questions on that? No. Good? We all good? So that was the hardest one you guys were saying, right? Yeah, well, number so, nine. So, yeah, I mean other than number nine. Yeah, skip number nine. Skip number nine. Oops. All right, simplex. 7.4, the simplex method. All right, so what, what, what's going on with this? Well, basically, um, doesn't this look exactly like what we've been doing in the last section, right? We could graph those instead of, instead of X and Y. It's x1, x2, but whatever, same thing, you know, call them whatever you want to call them. Isn't that exactly like saying 9x plus 13y less than or equal to 20 and 7x plus y less than or equal to 50? It is. It's exactly the same. And there's, there's the thing to maximize. You know, z equals 9x plus 11y. Same thing. They're just calling it x1 and x2. Could I graph those and get a couple lines and see where they... And the shading is down here. It's less. And find the three points. And plus, I could. You could totally do this problem the way we just did all those other problems. It's the exact same kind of question. Well, then why are we doing this new thing? Well, what they're going to do now, they're not quite pushing it yet. But in a minute, in a few minutes, they're going to push us to three letters instead of just two. If you look back in the last section, we always had two, like Citibank and State Bank, or whatever the two things were, right? How many pigs and how many cows should the 4 h -er raise? Or it was two, two options, right? X and Y. Now it's X1, X2, whatever. Two options. When they go to three, our little graphing method is not going to fly anymore. Why not? Why would three letters make graphing very hard? Yeah, three, three dimensional. You'd have to have the third axis coming out. You have a 3D graph with the shading 3D chunk and find the corners 3D, which maybe you could do if you were really tricky. I've never done anything like that. And then, how about four letters? What are you going to do then? We can't graph in four dimensions. Five, six, seven. You see the problem. The graphing method is limited. 
right? It only is good when you have two variables. If you're, for example, raising a farm, do you raise a farm? I'm using the wrong terminology. Huh? My, my, my daughter's taking animal science, so she's always <coughs> showing me these. They want to man they're, they're pretty careful about all that, managing the cows and how much they produce. And anyway, so farmers uh, use this technical kind of stuff. So, but if you're like, if you got cows and pigs and horses and whatever, you, how many should you do to maximize your profit? You got more than two variables. Real life, we got more than two variables. In a lot of business situations, way more than two variables. So we need another method that doesn't have pictures because we can't handle pictures when we go beyond two dimensions. That's the simplex method. Somebody, it was actually a defense, like a military person that came up with, um, yeah, you can type into Google, I'm sure you'd find the name and the history. Anyway, um, I, I'm not a history teacher, although I want to be, but um, I'll go on with the math. So basically, somebody came up with this other method for solving it that works even when you have more than two letters. So here we go. So I'm going to just show you the basics, and then we're going to basically hit the buttons on the calculator. This will be quicker because it's mainly calculator. Let me, let me take the equations they're giving me. Oops, let me give a little more room there. So take that first one, 9x1. I'll save the objective function. I'm going to put him at the bottom. We always put the objective function, the maximize or minimize thing. That's called the objective. You know, what is your objective? What is your goal? Usually to maximize profit or to minimize cost. Anyway, we always put that one at the bottom because he's kind of special. He's different than the others. He's not a greater than or less than, right? He's special. Trying to, you're trying to make him as big as possible or as small. He's not, a, he's not a constraint. All right, anyway, so the other ones, let me grab the first one. Okay, it says, oh, did I just do the wrong thing? It's 13, isn't it? What am I doing? I looked, I looked up at the wrong one. X2 less than or equal to 20, is that what it says? Yeah, less than or equal to 20. All right, and then the second one is 7X1 plus X2. Leave a little room. We're going to put in something special here. Let me put in a little more room as well. Okay, well, here's the idea. Here's what the guy who came up with this thought. He thought, well, look, if, if, I, if I told you, hey, here, here's my age. Well, here, here's my brother's age. My brother's age, and here's my age, and I'm older, so my brother's younger. So let me just give you a real-life situation. My brother's age is less than my age by three years. He's three years younger than me. So what does that mean? That means if I took my brother's age and I added three to it, because he's three years younger, then it would equal my age, wouldn't it? Right? If, one, if the left side is smaller than the right, and you add to it, then you can make it equal, huh? Take something smaller, you add to it, then it'll equal the bigger thing, right? That's the idea here. The left side, this 9x1 plus 13x2, this is being, we're being told, it's smaller than the right side. So add something to it, and then it'll become equal. Get the idea? Right, okay, but how much do we add to it? We don't know. Just call it S1. That stands for slack variable one. There's some slack. There's some lower amount. We don't know how much, right? We don't know how much lower it is. It's a variable. Just call it S1. It's the slack. Pick up the slack, right? Pick up the amount it's below by. So just add S1. And then it makes this equation equal. It's no longer lower. Now it's equal to 20. How about for the second equation? Same thing. The second equation is less than 50. Smaller, so add slack variable 2, some other amount, and it'll be equal. Does that make sense? You, you bring in these slack variables, they're called. You're picking up the slack, right? Because the left side is smaller than the right, so if you add something to it, it'll become equal. Just like my brother's age was smaller, so if you add 3 to it, it'll become equal to my age. That's the idea. Add to the small guy, and he'll equal the big guy. Right? And we don't know how much we're adding, so it's just a variable, S1, S2, etc. So you just bring in the slack variables, one for each equation, and one for each inequality. And then the bottom one, the objective function, the Z, well, let me just bring it down here, the Z equals 9X1 plus 11X2. See how we want X1 coming first and then X2? We want to make this guy into that same look. So I'm going to jump this over. All this is just rearrangement. You, just, just follow the yellow brick road. There's nothing real logical or deep or fancy here. It's just all kind of arrangement, and then we're going to type it into our calculator. 
That's all it is. So here I'm telling you how you arrange it is you bring that over so it becomes negative 9x1, negative 11x2 plus z equals 0. Everybody see what happened there. Remember when you jump something over the equal sign, the sign changes? I really just, if, if that bugs you, I really just subtracted, didn't I? I really just subtracted 9x1 whoops, and 11x2 from both sides, right? That's what I really just did. It made 0 on the right side, right? We good? So this, and, that, and that's my third equation. It's this right here. Minus 9x1 minus 11x2 plus z. Now, where am I going to put z? This is the x1 column. This is x2 down here. This is s1. Every, all, every variable has its own column. This is s2, so this last one will have to be z. Plus z equals 0. Everybody see how I made that last one? Yeah, there's going to be spaces. There's zeros there. When we type it into a matrix in a little bit, there'll be zeros there. That's what they'll be. So anyway, they're not going to make us do the whole thing yet. On this one, they're, all they're going to say is, hey, how many... They're all, I'm, I'm kind of overkilling it. They're saying, how many slack variables? All they're asking is, how many slack variables did we need? Well, Z is not a slack variable. Z was, Z was already there. He wasn't a new letter I brought in, right? He was there from the beginning, right? Z was right here. So I only brought in S1 and S2, huh? So two. Two slack variables. One for each inequality, right? There was two. There was, there was one, two less than statements, wasn't there? Each one needed to have the slack picked up because it was less. So two slack variables. Question? So, um, if you have uh, three inequality equations, will it be like three slack variables? Exactly. Good there? Now, there's more to do, but that's all they're asking. They're going to kind of like warm us up. They're going to, on these first like six, seven problems, they're just going to have us do part of it, part of it, part of it. And then finally, like the last four questions, we do the whole thing. So that's all they want. That's the whole question on this one. How many slack variables? Two. So really, I way overkilled it. You could just look at it and go, two, next question. That's all there is. All right, let's. All right, try that one. So first question is, how many slack variables? Variables. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and try to do the setup thing? Yeah, there's going to be three, aren't there? They're going to ask us a couple more questions. So go ahead and try the, the setup. In other words, take that first equation, 4x1. Oops, I'm already scribbling there. Take that first one, 4x1 plus, no minus, x2 plus slack 1. Equals, right? It changes the less than to equals because you pick up the slack. It's no longer less. You added something to it to make it equals. And then the next one is 9x1 plus 6x2 plus slack 2 is 216. And then 14x1 plus x2 plus slack 3 is 302. Is that making sense? Every less than or equal to gets a slack variable. And what would be the bottom one with the Z thing? Can you do, do the Z one at the bottom? Remember, you just jump these guys over, and you let the Z be at the end of the line. Yeah, it's just going to be negative 8x1 minus 3x2. The Z's at the end of the line, and then there's just 0 on the right side. It's the same every time. You get the pattern real quick. It'll be super easy. You'll love this section. It will take one-tenth the time of the last section. You know what the good thing just occurred to me? On the next test we take, you could do the easy, the, the graphing ones. Now, I'm going to make you show me the graphs, but you could check your answer with this method real quick. And then you know the answer you should get, and then do the graphing thing. And if you accidentally do something wrong in the graph, you'll know it, because you could have done this real quick and have your answer in 10 seconds. Anyway, it's a good way to double check the harder graphing things for the next exam. I'll explain. Once we have all the techniques and we review, I'll show you what I mean. Anyway, there we go. There's the setup. Does that make sense? So um, what they're going to say, how many slack variables? Well, it looks like three slack variables. All right, so try that. So take this one and make it into a, they call it a simplex tableau. It's a matrix. 
So go ahead and make it into one of these matrices and see which one. And just go ahead and do the same thing we've been doing. Make a simplex tableau. All right, so it's going to be <clears throat> 5x1. That's a 5 there. 5x1 plus 3x2 plus slack variable 1 is 15. 5x1 plus x2 plus slack variable 2. Remember, each, each variable gets its own column. Keep moving them over. Equals 15. Right? And then the z, you got to jump these guys over. So it'll be negative, what? Negative 5x1 minus x2. Plus Z is the end of the line, so the last variable is zero. So which which one is that? Oh, it's this one, isn't it? Because of this. See how the zeros are in there? The blanks are zeros. Right? So everybody see what I'm saying about that? Right? So this is zero, 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 zero. Right? And these are ones. If there's no number in front, these are ones. There. Everybody see that? So if there's a letter there, like an S1 or an S2 or a Z, they have a 1 in the front, because it's 1 times S1, 1 times S2, 1 times Z. Like any letter has a 1 in front, understood? And the blanks are all zeros, aren't they? So yeah, it's B. That's, the, that's what we're going to type into our calculator in a minute. We're going to basically put that in matrix A and, and say, simplex, do your thing. And it'll just solve it for you automatically, write down the answers. Good to there? All right, so... And explain to you. So now, now we're now they're jumping to the end. So in a minute, we're going to do the whole process. We're going to type it into our calculator, and we're going to hit program. Boom, and it'll just solve it instantaneously for us. It'll solve it and give us an answer. Now we're interpreting the answer. They're saying, hey, suppose you just did the simplex program, and you got this answer. What does it mean? So let me help you interpret an answer now. So if you got this matrix, it'll basically show you that matrix on your screen is what it'll do when we run the program. So what does that matrix mean? Well, the first thing is you've got to put back in the letters. See how X1 and X2 and X3 are the first spots, um, X1, X2, X3, and then start the slack variables, and then Z is always last. Remember that? Okay. Now, there, there's something called basic variables. Basic variables... By, by the way, notice a variable is a column, like this is x1, going down. It's the column going down, right? So when I say a variable, blah, 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 I mean going down, going down, that column, blah, 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 right? So basic variable column is all zeros and a1. That's what it means to be a basic variable. You're basic. You're just a bunch of zeros and a1. So which letters there, which columns, have all zeros and a single one? X2, X2 S1, <coughs> and Z. That's why I put over here X2, S2, and Z. Those are what we call the basic. They're basic. They're simple. They're as simple as you can get. All zeros and a one. Now, I'm not giving you a lot of theory. I don't even remember the theory off the top of my head, to tell you the truth. This is going to be a little bit like magic. <coughs> like, why does all this work? I'd be glad to research it with you. And I mean, I used to teach it more thoroughly, but I've been using the calculator for a few years now, and I've kind of forgot all the theory. But if you're really interested, come by office hours. I'd be glad to dive deeper into the theory with you and show you what's happening. Anyway, basic variables column is all zeros and a one. Okay. What are, what are the non-basic variables, the other ones? Right? Non-basic. Non-basic are the others. The ones that are n more complex than just a bunch of zeros and a one. They're not basic. They're not simple. Right? That'd be the other letters. That's X1, X3, and S1. Good. Now, find the basic feasible solution by setting the non-basic variables equal to zero. That's always what we do at the end of the problem. We set... Well, well let me just say this way. The answer is the following. Here's how you read the answer to, to the final tableau, the final matrix. 
the non-basic variables equal zero. That's what it means. Any column that is not basic, meaning not all zeros and a one, that answer is just zero for that letter. So, so here's what I'm saying. Look, look at this matrix. The way you would look at it is you would just start with the first, start with X1. Say, hey, okay, is X1, is that, is that basic? Is that just going down? Is he just all zeros and a one? No, he's not basic. So then he's just zero. Okay, X2, are you basic? Yeah, X2 is basic. Going down, he's all zeros and a one. Well, what's his answer? You grab the one, you go all the way to the right. 17. See that? For the, for the ones that are basic, you find their one, you shoot all the way to the right. That's their answer. Let's do X3. X3, are you basic? X3, going down X3. Are you all zeros and a one, no. X3? No. no. He's like, I'm not simple. I'm not basic. I'm not all zeros and a one. Well, then you're zero, baby. You're just zero, right? That's what we do. When you're not, when you're not simple, you're just zero. The non-basic variables, we just say, well, then you're zero. It makes it very easy. How about S1? Slack variable 1. Are you basic? Looking down his column, is he all zeros and a 1? No. No, no he's complex. Well, then what does that mean about him? Yeah. He's zero. We're not even going to regard him as anything but zero. How about slack variable 2? Are you basic? Yes. Yes, he's like, yeah, I'm basic. I'm just 1, 1, and all zeros. I'm simple. I'm basic. Well, then where's his answer? Look at the 1 and go straight across, 29. S2 is 20, 29. Everybody so see? No, no. The one is just telling us where to look for the answer. Right? Like, look, see how X2, the one, told us over here at the 17, was in the middle. The one was in the middle for X2, so the answer is in the middle for S2. The one's at the top, so the answer is at the top. It just tells you where to find the answer. So, how about for Z? Z is in the bottom, so the answer is in the bottom. Z, Z is basic, by the way. So, Z is 14. Z will always be basic. <coughs> and we're done. There's the, these are the answers I wrote over here. Oh, is this solution a maximum? How do we know this is best? Yes. Oh, did I say no? Oh, yes, no. <laughs> Never mind. No. How you know? When there are negative numbers in the bottom row, you're not done. You're not at a max. See the negative 4 there, the negative 3 there, the negative 1 there? You see those? That means you're not done. Now, your calculator is not going to do that to you. So this, so this actually is not a final answer. This is like an intermediate answer. Our program won't mess with that. It'll just jump right to the end. You'll never see this. But for those, you know, so if you were to do it by hand, back when I used to torture poor students and make them do this by hand, this is how you would know you're not done. You have more steps to go. If there's negatives in the bottom row. If you're interested in why that's the case, because remember that bottom row comes from the Z, the maximizing thing. And right, because that bottom row, I don't know if you care. I'll show you one theory step. That means minus 4x1, minus 3x2, um, minus 1s1, plus 1z equals 0. So what? Well, then move those <laughs> over. That means Z is positive 4x1 positive 3x2 minus 1s1 plus 1s1. That means z can be increased by increasing x1 and x2. Z's not at his maximum yet. I don't know if you followed all that. Who cares? Your calculator will do it. But that's why negatives in the bottom, move them over. That means there's positive. means there's room to grow. Is what that means. You're not at your maximum yet. So basically, if there's any negatives in the bottom row, we just say, nope, we're not done yet. We're not at our maximum. If they're all positive in the bottom row, we go, yep, that must be the maximum. Because you can't improve it. That means... All right, so there's the kind of facts you would write in your 3 by 5 card for our next exam. When is our next exam? After Easter break, uh, the 20th. So, yeah, three weeks from now. All right, so let's keep going. Questions? That's all of that one. That good? So that's how you read a final answer. To the calculator. Okay, so here we go. So basically they're saying, uh, take that. What, what's the answer to that thing? Oh, did I skip part A? Yeah, I, I'm not going it's, to... It's the same thing. Let's move on to the real deal. So the real problems start at number seven, where you have to actually do it. All right, so take that question and make it into a matrix. And, so, and once you've got that, I'll sh and then put that into your calculator in matrix A.
Remember how we enter matrices? So, so make that into one big simplex tableau. So let me do it with you. So we take 5x1 <coughs> plus x2 plus slack variable 1, and that'll equal 50. Then we take 3x1 plus 2x2 plus slack variable 2 is 70. And then we take x1 plus x2 plus slack variable 3, and that's 60. Good so far? I just put in slack 1, slack 2, slack 3 for the three inequalities. Now, remember the bottom one has to have the z. It's right here. But jump these guys over, and the z goes at the end, right? So minus 2x1 minus 3x2, the z at the end, 0. Always 0 on the right side of the z. Isn't that good? Now, turn that into a matrix. Put 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And these are 1s. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Right, see how I did that there? So the, the matrix would be 5, 1, so 1 also, 1, 3 zeros, and a 50. And 3, 2, 0, 1, 0, 0, 70. And 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 60. And negative 2, negative 3, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. There we go. So put that into matrix A. Remember how to enter a matrix in your calculator? Put that into matrix A. It's called the initial simplex tableau. It's the first initial, the starting simplex matrix. So put that into your calculator. Remember how to, how to do it in your calculator? You hit, on the TIs anyway, hit second matrix. Second matrix. If you have a Casio, grab me after. I'll see if I can help you with the stuff or the TI-92. You guys, you guys need the simplex program one way or the other. Hit second matrix and then, um, then go across to edit. Right? Isn't that what you do? I don't remember here. Second matrix, yeah, go across to edit, hit enter. Um, across to edit and enter. And then, um, and then what size? Yeah, remember the size is always down, four by across, seven. Yep, so four by seven. Four by seven. And then type in the matrix. And then when you're done, hit second, quit. Remember, quit is above the mode key. So there's what you got to do. So go to second matrix on the TIs. Go arrow across, arrow across to the edit mode. Arrow across. There's a twice, twice across to edit. Hit enter. And then four by seven. Type in the matrix. And then when you're done, it saves it. Just quit. Once you've typed in the last entry, just quit. If you got all that in there, then we're then I'm going to show you. Then we're going to just say simplex. Do your thing. I'll show you how to do that. Is so everybody getting that in there? So I'm going to do it too. Four by seven. What are the numbers? So five, one, one, and All right, so everybody got that in? I'm going to flash off of that. That's okay. All right, so I just typed it all into my graphing calculator. Now I'm going to go second quit. It's all typed in there. Second quit. Now, you ready? If, 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 you, if you received the program from me, if you didn't, stay after class. I'll give you the, the simplex program. Here, it's under program now. If I gave it to you, I see the program. See the PRGM key right here? 
third row down, hit program, and, and simplex should come up. Because it's in your memory banks. All you gotta do is hit enter. And, and, and then one more time. It says, you want me to do the simplex program? I do, please do. Boom, final matrix, it just did it. It went out to me, it knows to look out in matrix A, it knows where to look. It grabbed it, did its thing, there's the answer, final matrix. It just solved it with the simplex method. If you have the program. Otherwise, you've got a horrific number of 10 billion steps, not 10 billion, but maybe 20 to do by hand. So you want to get this program from me. All right, so let me write that down, and we'll talk about what that answer means. <coughs> okay, so the answer, the answer matrix that I'm getting is what, 7 halves, um, 0, 1, negative a half. Uh, there's more to it. I have to go over to the right. Let me first write all these down. 3 halves, negative 1 half, 5 halves, and this is what? 0, 1. It's really columns. See the basic variables that have all the zeros and stuff? And the ones that are not basic are just going to be 0 in the end. We don't care about them, really. Okay, and there's a little bit more. If I go right, push the right arrow... I get the rest. There we go. So what is that? Zero, zero, one, zero, and zero, 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 one. And then 15, 35, 35, 25, 105. All right. So, all right, so there's the answer matrix I'm getting. Right, you guys getting that? If you have the program. Um, okay, now, what does all that mean? Well, remember, the first column is X1. The second is X2. Was there an X3 in this problem? Looking here, we only had X1 and X2, huh? So then what comes after X1 and X2 if that's all the X's there are? There's an X3, isn't there? It's X1 plus X2 equals X2. Isn't that three? Three equations. I, I'm, I'm not saying number of equations. I'm simply saying, do I see an X sub 3 anywhere? Oh, no. no. So just X1 and X2. So then this must be S1, S2, S3. And the last, well, the second to last is always Z. And these are the answers. With me on that? See how that always works? You just start with X1, X2, and you just do as many as they have. Then as soon as you're done with X's, you start with S. S1, S2, S3. The second to last column is always Z, and the final column is your answers. Good so far? Now, how do you do the final? Well, let's just go through it. What is X1? Well, you tell me, X1. Is that a basic? Is it all zeros and a single one? No, so he's just zero. Remember that? X2, is he a basic? Yeah, so where's his answer? Where's the one? Second spot, answer column, second spot, 35. X2 is 35. Remember how this works? Yeah. And then how about S1? Is he basic? Yes. Is he a single one and all zeros? Yeah. Where's his answer? Top spot. Yeah. Top spot. 15. S1 is 15. What about S2? Is he basic? Is he all zeros and a one? No. So he's just zero. S3. Is he basic? Yeah. Yep. Where's his answer? Third spot. Third spot. 25. Just go where the 1 is. The 1 tells you where the answer is. Finally, Z. Z is never basic. Z is at the bottom, 105. There we go. There's our answer. Does that make sense? See, that's how we could have just done that last terrible one, number 8, from the last section we started with. You could have just typed it into this thing and hit the button on your calculator. And it would have cranked out this answer that quick for you. Final answer, everything. That way, if you have a really hard one, on the test or in the homework with, that you have to graph, you know, you can just do it this way. You, you still have to graph them on the test. I will ask to see the graphs. But, you know, you can know what the answer is going to be ahead of time by just cranking them out with the simplex program. So double check. That way you don't fix your little mistakes, you know. Your graphing, because graphing is more painful, right? You can find your little mistakes. See how this method's quicker? Is that good? Does that make sense on that? How are we doing? We have time for one more. And then I'll give the program to whoever needs it. You all that have the program, did it work? Did you try it? Is it cranking it out? Yeah. Good deal. It's golden. 
All right. All right, so number 11, let's set this thing up. First off, so which one do we start with on the top? Do, do I start with this Z one? No. No, he always goes to the bottom, right? The Z always goes to the bottom. That's the maximized thing. So you start with this guy, huh? So you can, if you want to skip the letters, you can just jump right to the numbers. Is that, is that my, yeah, let me, how about I do a shortcut for you now? If you want to just go right to the numbers, right? One, five, one, 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 five, one, one. Save the four. 46 is going to go way over here in the answer, huh? In the answer column. Everybody see what I did there? I just put in one, five, one, one. Now, hold on. Just hold on with the slack. I'll show you a real quick, easy way to do that. Just, just do the one. See the one, five, one, one, and the answer way over in the right. I know there's going to be a slack variable. Hold up. I'll show you a real easy way to do all the slack at once. Next column. What, I mean, next row. What's the next row? 2, 1, 4, 1. 2, 1, 4, 1. I know there's going to be a slack. Let me hold up, though. And the answer way over on the right, 1, 15. Good so far? What about the Z on the bottom? Remember the Z? These guys are all going to jump over, and therefore their signs all change, remember? When they jump to the other side of the equal sign, you always do that for the Z. You jump everybody to the other side, so all the Z letters, the numbers, change signs. So that'll be what? What's in the front? Negative 1. Negative, yeah, because it's basically 1, 1, 2, 1, 6, but they all switch. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 6. Is that good? Everybody good to there? And, and the answer for him is zero, because there's nothing left on the right side with the Z guy. You jumped everybody from the right side over to the left, so his answer column for Z is always zero. Now, what about all that slack stuff that I'm missing? That's super easy. It's just the identity matrix. In other words, it's just ones down the diagonal. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. See how I put that in there? It's always that way. It's always ones down the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. So we have three, so three ones down the diagonal, fill in the rest of the zeros. That's what the slack always ends up doing. That makes sense? Just to save time. Everybody see how I did that? So just fill in the letters you have. 1, 5, 1, 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, and then the negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 6. And then you go, all right, how many more spots? Well, it, 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 there's three. The rows and columns of the leftover always match. Three rows, so three ones, and then fill in the zeros. You got the answers on the right. Okay, type that into your, put that in matrix A in your calculator and hit program simplex and crank it out. And you'll get an answer. How are we doing? Yeah, we have time. Yeah, so type that in. Put that into matrix A now. Matrix A, and that's a what by what? That's a three by three by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three by eight? That's a three by eight. So you go over to edit. So I'm going over to edit, and it's a three by eight. Type those numbers in. One, five, one. Be careful when you type in one little mistake and it's <coughs> messed up. Okay. I've got it typed in on my calculator. And I'm going to go program simplex do it. All right. I just got an answer. An answer matrix, which is that one, final matrix. One, I'll go straight down. One, one, five, five, negative four, twenty-eight. Five, negative four, twenty-eight. One, three, five. <coughs> one, three, five. One, zero, zero. There's a basic variable. One, zero, zero. One, negative one, six. 
Um, 0, 1, 0, that's another basic variable. I have to move over. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 1, let me get rid of that 8 there. 3 by 8. So 3 <coughs> by 8. Um, 0, 0, 1, and 46, 69, 276. Like, like so. All right, remember how to do the columns. It's x1, x2, x3, x4. We went all the way to four variables on this one, huh? Oh, whoops, I'm, not, I'm on the wrong screen. Let me show you what I'm doing. So I just wrote the answer matrix. Yeah, here I am. I just wrote out that big answer matrix that my simplex program gave me, and then I'm going to do the column. Remember, we start with x1, x2, x3, x4, because we had four variables, right? And then start the S's, the slack variables. Slack 1, slack 2. Is this slack 3? It's Z. Remember, the second to last is always Z, the objective function, what you're trying to maximize. And then the, over here is the answers. Remember, the second to last is always Z, and the very last is always answers. All right, what, what, what are my answers? What's X1? Look at X1. What is he? Zero, because he's not basic. What's X2? Look at him. Zero. What's X3? Look at him. Zero. What's X4? The ones in the top? 46. What's slack 1? Zero. What's slack 2? It's in the middle. 69. And finally, what's Z on the bottom? 276. We got our answer that quick. Quicker than graphing, huh? Not quicker if you have to do the simplex by hand, but much better with the program. And so there's the answer. So it's. So relative to a graph, the, the 46, the 69, and the 276 are what on the graph? Well, this would be a four dimensional graph. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're. they're yeah, they're, they're corners. That's corners on a four-dimensional graph. Okay. Yeah. So it's hard to visualize, yeah. So slack variables are new variables we made up. They were not part of the original question. So really, it's the point 0, 0, 0, 4, 6 in a four-dimensional graph is the corner that maximizes the best profit is 276. Let's type that in and make sure it's right. 0, 0, 0, 46, and 276. Does that make sense? Questions on that? So this section is due next time, which is what section? 7.4. So 7.3, got a little more time on 7.3. 7.4, they're both due on Wednesday at class time. Wednesday and Thursday. Thursday. Oh, Thursday. Why do I keep saying? Yeah. We're, we're Tuesday. This is Tuesday, and we're in Tuesday, Thursday class. They're due on Thursday. Yes. All right. Hang out if you don't have a simplex program. Be glad to give it to you. Casio people and TI-89, if you have a few minutes, I can help you or you can come by office hours, I can do something to help.